Hey guys, so we're just going to wait for Stephen um, and the other people to join the live. Hey guys, what's going on? Yes, we're in the house. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's do this. How's everyone doing? So we're just waiting for Stephen, Ginger. Shush. We're waiting for Stephen, Ginger, and Matthew Brown to join the live. Come on. Yeah, this is gonna be a good one still. I can't even wait for this one. This one's gonna to be top. <laughs> no, it's not a cat, it's a dog. <laughs> so if you guys do hear any barking in the background, it's my dogs, guys. Who have we got in the building? We've got Jed in the building, come on. We've got base, Basic as Raya. We've got, is it Jave or Java, Java? We've got Max on drums, come on. We've got Ayo, cool. So we're just waiting for these guys to jump on the live. We've got drummer boy ZJ, come on. We've got Philip in the building. What do you mean? Yes. Come on. We've got Jamie Lopez in the building. He's currently on tour with Burner Boy. Come on, guys. Yeah, we've got some big boys on this one. Come on. What's going on? What's going on? What's going, What's going on? on? What's going on? Going on? How you doing, man? What's going on? I can't complain, man. Thanks, bro. How you doing? I said, man, this heat is kicking my ass, man. Honestly, <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Yeah, so we're just waiting for Stephen to come through and um, Matthew Brown. I'll give you about two minutes for them to come in. But Ginger, what's going yes, on, man? Yes, yes. Yeah, man. we got got Matty here. What's going on? <laughs> we got the big boys in the building, man. Just waiting for one more to go. Get started. Matty, how's your day been, man? Good, you know, bro. Good man, busy, bro. Good, bro. Busy day. You're looking fresh. What fresh trim, yeah? You got a fresh trim for I, the life. I've, I haven't, you know. I got my hair done, man. My, I need, I need a trim, bro. You said, Jin? There, bro. I'm in LA at the moment. Like, uh, LA. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's it saying out there? Um, um, it's morning time. It's nine in the morning, you know. Nine in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. All right, cool. Guys, we're going to get started here because Stephen's on the way. I don't want to keep this live on for too long because I know everyone's got things to do, but I just want to go around the room. Um, Ginger, like, your your list of experiences is absolutely crazy, bro. Um, but I just want you to um, introduce yourself. Just tell us a bit about what you do, um, what you do with your, your music experience, where you're going with it what you're doing currently, if you're on any tours or anything. Just like a brief introduction and then we'll move on to Matty as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, my name is Jonathan Hamilton, uh, known as Ginger in the industry. Um, yeah, I'm a drummer, music director, programmer, um, and I now own a brand as well, but we'll get, <laughs> to, we'll get to that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm currently with Sam Smith, um, what with VV Brown, um, Pixie Lot and Dubs, Peter Andre, uh, Jesse J, everyone, bro. Um, Ollie Merz, 
the end I have is um, most recent, uh, most recently Westlife as well. But up until this this tour, they just went out. Come on, Matty, yeah. could you give us a bit of an introduction about yourself as well? Uh, Matty Brown from London, still live in London. Um, I am a drummer, producer, MD. Uh, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> you, you don't know. Everything. I wish. I wish. I wish. I wish there was more, man. To add, uh, but yeah, man. There's a lot more. I think there's a play. There is a lot more, bro. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot more. Every time I play, you can find it. Dumb day. Come on. Do do a couple of events that I'm definitely going to be bringing back this year, man. Looking at um September, but it's just really crazy right now because I feel everyone's just going out at the same time. Yeah. So, and I know, like find the time to do it is a bit mad but yeah i do that 26 um started off working with like little sims uh red free two uh lion babe lady leisha and like most recently like Oli Murs, stormzy um golden yeah bruv I always go black. <laughs> no, yeah, I can't lie. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I miss hearing you on that red stick, you know. Red. Uh, I miss hearing you on that. Why, right. why are you going to be outside? Why are you going to be outside? <laughs> <laughs> that has to be Steven, isn't it? For flip sake, bro. You're so glamorous, bro. <laughs> All right, so if you don't know, we got Steven in the building. He, he, just he, he definitely he went he went to that location. Just, <laughs> no, you know it is, bro. I mean, this guy needs no introduction. I'm Look at his surroundings. I'm bro. actually in soundcheck, you know. That's the maddest thing. Oh what, yo, you're 180 today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely I'm definitely yeah, coming. Uh, I'm, right, come on. I'm literally doing soundcheck and I need to go to church for a convention and then come back and do 180. So it's my right, so, so what is this your is this your brief introduction, yeah, of yourself, yeah? What's that? Brief introduction of yourself. <laughs> I'm just a humble servant, man. I'm, I'm just serving <laughs> under, you know, serving under Minister Ginger and Apostle Matthew. Do you know what I mean? I'm a humble servant. I'm honoured. It's an honour. It's an honour. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, though. Nah, All right, cool, guys. What you saying? Guys, I don't want to take too much time, yeah? So I'm going to do, like, a quick icebreaker, yeah? You lot just try and answer this oh. question, yeah? Because I know a lot of people got onto me about this question, but let's see if you guys really have it, yeah? Mm. Quick icebreaker. You've got 10 drumsticks on the table. Yeah, ten drumsticks on the table. You take away seven. How many drumsticks do you have left? What question? Is it? There's no is question. It yeah, is it? it, 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 it is. No, you have ten drumsticks on the table. Ten single Vic Fur drumsticks yeah, on the table. Yeah, ten drumsticks on the table. Yeah, you take away seven. Yeah, how many do you have left? Three. No, no, no. You still have ten. No, no wait. Seven, what answer? Seven. 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 Of the seven, table, seven. Seven. Yeah, I you can't read the comments. You can't read the comments. I'm not reading I'm not reading the comments, bro. I saw your eyes go seven. down, bro. But if I take it for myself, it's the seven though. Se is, what is that is that what you're saying, Jidda? No, I I'm saying ten. Because I took seven and there's still three on the table, they're all mine. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> there's three left. There's nah, three left on the table. Nah, the correct answer is seven. It's oh. a play. It's a play on words, isn't it? So we have words. ten drums. Oh, I need, I need, bro. That's that's bait, man. Come and on. Bro. It's, it's not. It's honestly, it's not bait because it caught me off guard as well. But I you need... have ten drumsticks on the table. You yeah. take away seven. You take away here, yeah. and there's there's three left on the table. So the table has three. To get. So are we here to talk about music? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my table. They're all my sticks. I still have ten. Are we here to talk about music? Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So, the first question, which um, I think I kind of know a bit about um, um, Ma uh, Matty Brown about and Stephen, but Ginger, I'm going to start with you. Um, yes. Your first introduction to music, um, leading on to you becoming a professional drummer, um, just short, snappy, like, what was the start, bro? Like, where, where did it start from? Where was the spark? Start, started in church, man. Um... Yeah, same same as the other two. Um, so in church, my dad's a he's a pastor, so I, I was born in church, as as they would say, um, born in the pew, as they would say. But um, yeah, I started in church, started playing. Um, I started playing in service from about five five years old. So I I got a really early introduction. Um, it was a small church, so there was no competition, and I was the pastor's son. So who else would play? <laughs> um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, that was my real introduction 
um, just playing every Sunday and then listening to the records that we get from America. Um, you know, your Hezekiah Walkers, your, um, you know, your Tri City Singers, your James Hall, just listening to choir music and trying to play what I heard. Um, that was my introduction into it. And then obviously, Playing for worship artists like Noel Robinson. Um, oh, wow. That was my first real introduction into a playing in a concert setting. And then um, from there, kind of progressed into to pop music after that. Dope. Oh, amazing. Stephen, can you give yeah. us a bit about you as well, please? Yeah, I think the, the story's similar. So my my earliest um, memory, my mum was like always, my mum used to sing in church. She still does. And um, I think the, the earliest memory was there was a Ron Canoli tape. Um, the album was this album, God is Able. And there was that one song, The Battle is the Lord, where you had Chester Thompson, Alex Acuna, and Carl Alvarez. They did like a, they yeah. shed it on stage yeah. basically. And I was, yeah. I was hooked. Like that, that, that clip right there just got me. And then from there, like, I was just so fascinated about it. So um, literally, like, I would get like pots and pans, emulate. You know, when that part was coming, I'm the fourth. Like, I am the fourth drummer. Yeah, and then from there, like, obviously, the passion grew. And then my earliest, I think my first gig was at six years old. Because um, there was a funeral going on at the church on a Sunday night. And um, obviously, I was going to school the next day. And then, apparently, the drummer didn't turn up. So, apparently, someone asked my mum, can you get your son? So wow. they've literally driven back home. They're like, put on your suit. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. <laughs> Got back to the church. Man, clap, clap, tick. <laughs> <laughs> at the funeral. And then from there, like, yeah, like, I started playing, like, on Sundays. And then um, I think my introduction more into the, like, you know, like, more, like, urban scene was through, it's funny, through, like, one of my best friends who's not a musician. He's an asset manager. And me... He was like one of them guys. You know them guys that can do a little one two on drums at church. Yeah. Like they can hold it if you need me. So he was. He came to me. He's like, oh, I heard you play drums. He's like, you're not better than me. And I'm like, come on, like. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so then, yeah. So I ended up playing. So I come to my church. So through there, then I started meeting Bear. And funny enough, um, Mikel was playing at that church. Oh wow! So that's actually how I met Mikel. So Mikel's like one of the first drummers I ever met. And through Mikel, I started meeting Bear, other guys, and then. From there, like, one thing leads to another, to another, to another. And then, yeah, man, like, from there, it just, you know, we're here today, isn't it? I guess. That's crazy. Yeah. But, so, it's crazy because already there's a pattern there. So, we're seeing Ginger Church, Stephen Church as well. And I, let me not guess, but I'm going to guess Matty's one is church as well. But I'm going to let you introduce... Matty went Berkeley, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Hold you to the Berkeley, bro. Exactly. You're right, you're right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, with me, I said my earliest memories of drums. To be honest, like my parents are me, well, my dad's a me. You're from the UK. Hey, bro. You hear me? Can I hear me? Yeah, now I can. Okay, yeah. Um, If you're from like the UK, you must have been familiar with it. My dad, uncle. Um, so kind of like growing up, um, it was like music in the house, drums in the house. Um, uh, well, just, yeah, just, I was always around music, really. So to like play the drums, like I guess it was like kind of like second nature as well. Um, and then yeah, I would say my earliest like gig would have to be I think I was in like year six and there was like a um like a choir thing at the ranch in Hackney where I'm from. The drama the drama couldn't make it. I think they had like a class or whatever. Hey shout out them guys, you know. Yeah, hey, the guys listen. that couldn't make it. Yeah <laughs> man. It's yeah, a real yeah, yeah. yeah they a couldn't he could he couldn't make it man so uh, I think like the stool pan teacher was like, yo, man, there's a little guy at our school, man, he's cold, man. So they asked my mum, and then they like gave me a CD in like the afternoon. It was like, yeah, you got the gig in the, in the evening. And you know, I, was, I had an interview literally two days ago with my dad, and I was saying in the interview, like, back then, there was just like no fear, like zero fear. 
Because you don't even know really what to fit, really. You know what I mean? So I just went and did my thing and it was cool, man. Um, and yeah. Yeah, man, that's, that, that was my first, I feel like my first memory. But I feel like church in general was just like the first. Yeah, step and stone. Yeah, bro. Like my grandma would just start singing any song. My uncle would just start singing any song in any key, any tempo. You're getting hotted up to slow down or just speed <laughs> up. So, yeah, man, you get the training from early, bro. Yeah. I think church is like a very like I think we really underestimate how much of a beneficial like training ground church can be for us. Um, people really take that for granted, like because that's the only place where you would really get the truth. If that makes sense, I think, it's, if, I think it's the best. Yeah, yeah. I, say, I say that because it's funny. Yeah, I met two guys yesterday. They came to um they came to my church. Fun enough, they came all the way from Birmingham, and they they're both keyboard players, and they were like, oh yeah, like um. Yeah, like been following you a lot. Like, really want to get into like playing, um, especially just stuck in church. And I was like, bro, like that's where you need to be because, yeah. like, really and truly, one, let's not negate from the spiritual aspect of like giving your gift to God. God opens up them doors for you. Yeah, Absolutely. that's the that's the first ultimate. Thing. <clears throat> Number two, like, do you remember like back in the day, like even them times, me and Matty, we would have probably even been too young to get the call up for some of these, but. When Ginger, like Ginger and Smooth, we did like Noel Robinson, you had Tones doing like Matthew Allen. Like them days, when you're watching them man play, it's just like raw, like. But Levels. Like, guys, you don't even go close, you stay at the back. You know I mean? <laughs> and and they, they became the guys then doing the pop. So, but we met them through the church. So you get the call up because you're at the, the, the church event playing for like. You know, the little auntie choir, like, you're playing for them, but, like, man, then we'll still rate what you're doing. So, like, I was literally, like, to the guy, bro, like, stay in church. Like, it's, it's very, it's a very doggy dog world out there. But I think we can all definitely say, like, we benefited from the relationships we created in the church environment. My first Absolutely. call up was actually through Smooth, Ginger's brother. Yep. Because I saw yep. Smooth at, like, a church site, and he saw him playing, mm -hmm. and he was like, come and do Sasha Keeble. And from there, yeah. it just, you know what I mean? Wow. So that's definitely the best playground in my opinion. Bad, bad, I'm flies, bro. Bro, I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Flies. It's bad, bro. Flies, it's bad. Man. I remember that. Guys, I want to get straight into the first, like, question that I know a lot of people, a lot of people ask this question, a lot of musicians ask this question. So let me just get out of the way right now. Um, and it's like, how can a drummer improve their sound and find their own voice and presence? Um, we'll start with May. Oh, you know what, man? Find someone that you're inspired by. Can you guys hear me now? Is it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Find someone that you're inspired by. Um, and then maybe try and, like, merge your vibe with theirs and create your own vibe. Bro, I was heavy. But the security knows. Bro. Even till now. You cut out, bro. Cut out. Yeah. Hear me now? Yeah, yeah. sorry. Say that yeah, again. I was heavily influenced by Ginger, still am, and like even just wearing my drum sound, etc. Bro, so Appreciate like, it, man. yeah, man. So find someone you're inspired by, um, and then maybe just try and like, inf like, put your vibe in there, you know, and then just go from there, man. Just go from there, bro. Stephen, what would you say? Yeah, similar. Like, I, I would definitely say, I think nowadays a lot of guys they want to sound like other people. Yeah, but that's not the way. If I've got a ginger, I don't need another ginger. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And so, like Matty, bro, ginger was my like. I tell him all the time, like that was my go-to. Like, but I, I was like, I never want to be exactly like him. And I think everyone has, everyone has their like. When I listen to everybody play, everybody has their niche. And I think one thing I used to kind of run away from, but it, it's kind of play to my advantage now is my African side. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I've almost merged the two together and that's kind of what's shaped my sound of playing. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, in that regard, I don't really, not to say, I, I definitely think, but I take inspiration from Matty. Like I hear Matty play some stuff and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I can't lie. Sometimes I even, my tech is Callum, is Callum, Matty's cousin. I'd be like, hey, shoot that snare like Matty, though. Like, <laughs> like, I'm not gonna sound exactly like him because I'm gonna play it my way. Do you get what I'm saying? Who was so, that? 
Yeah, that's that's from that's from gins, bro. New drums, though. That's all. That's all. Bro. That's from gins, bro. All of that. That's all gins. So, Ginger, how would you answer that question? Um, spend time with your drums, man. Spend time with your drums because ultimately, if you spend time with your drums, you're gonna you're gonna know what you like. You know, and you get to a point where you stop you stop um, listening to what it sounds like on somebody else's drums, and you know, okay, this is what I want my drums to sound like in this room that I'm playing at right now. And you go from there. That's how you kind of, you know, you kind of carve out your individuality. Um, you know, you got instrument. And your instrument will, will, like, drums is a talking instrument, so your instrument will talk back to you. And then that's it. You will start to feel, okay, this is how I want my sound to be. And yeah, obviously echoing what the guy's saying, you know, find those <clears throat> those sounds that you you connect with. For me, it was Matty's uncle, Jerry Brown. So, um, you know, listening to him, listening to, you know, Peter Matthews, them guys, they helped me kind of shape my sound. But ultimately, I still had to go back into my bedroom, tune around my drums and see, okay, sure, this is what that. I want. This is what I want to hear. So, it, you know... Like you, like they said, you know, take from your your inspiration, but ultimately bring it back to you and carve yourself out of it. Thank you so much, man, Stephen. I want to go back to what you said, yeah, about Ooh. African music. <clears throat> obviously, your 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 heritage, your culture, are shaping how you play now. Yeah. How important is it as a drummer to first, or even if it is, whether it is important or not important, for a drummer to first go back home? and study their culture of music. Is it important? Is it necessary or does it? Oh yeah, of course. Um, I think music, music is a language, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's like native dialects, like every country speaks a different language. Now for me, I've always been the guy where I've always said to myself, I never not want to be able to play something. Do you know what I'm saying? I always want, like throw me in, a Latin gig, I want to be able to hang. Throw me in a rock gig, I want to be able to hang. Now, obviously, when I was growing up, bro, it wasn't cool to be African. Let's call it a spade a spade. Every African wanted to be Jerome. That's just black and white. Right? <laughs> and, and I went to my mom's church, was heavily Ghanaian. So I learned how to play that stuff. But I like what Matty was saying. Uncles just be like, yo, if you want to play with the big boys, you better play. You know what I'm saying? So I learned a lot from there. But then... I almost immersed myself deeper in the music and started to love the sound. And it's mad because now, like Junior saying, Afro beats is very popular now. Very, even, even like, let's call a spade a spade. Like, every, like, urban artist has an Afro beats tune on their album now. They want to they wanna feature with a Burner Boy, with a Wiz, with a David Doe. Now, yeah. imagine so. I did not know... And I think it's just silly, like, if I'm an African guy, a Ghanaian, and I don't know how to play my own music, that's just mad, like, in my opinion. It's like, you man can play reggae in your sleep. I can play Ghanaian music in my sleep. I, I can't, like, I can't, like, I can't. Exactly, sorry. Yes, you can. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? Exactly. But it doesn't, and it, it's mad. What you, what you don't realise as well is when you actually study, because... Like, music back in the day is very different to what it is now. There was no computers. There was no nothing. Everything was literally guys getting in the studio and playing. But, like, for example, in Ghana, we had a lot of reggae music. Now, if I didn't learn that stuff, now that I'm so I'm heavily touring with coffee, so they're shocked. Like, how can you play reggae so well? And I'm like, well, we play that in Ghana. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like learning my native music. And I thought this is something I taught a lot of the young guys. Man, for the young guys watching, like, Yes, the pop gig is what you see us play is cool, but that all stems from church music, from Absolutely. back in the day, like high life music, reggae music, jazz. So once you immerse yourself in all of that and understand it, oh, there's their Ghana flags popping up, I hear it. <laughs> Stephen for president, boy. But it, you, start, you start to realise how it's just music, one language, that's just being used in different ways, you know what I'm saying? So it's very important, very, very important. Ginger. Um, yes, you've been an inspiration for years on end. Even still now, you're still doing your thing, bro. You're still kicking. Do you understand? So, I appreciate um, very rarely do I hear musicians 
very rarely do I do I come across musicians that understand that away from your skill, character speaks volumes. Um, and for you to hold your ground for so long, it's way more than your skill. There's a lot of people that have skill, but their character always, it just fails them. So how yeah. important is it as a musician, in fact, just as a person, regardless of what you're doing, even if you're not yeah. a musician, a businessman, whatever the case may be, how important yeah. is it for you for your for your character be character to be in tune and how does that kind of blend and help your 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 music lifestyle to prosper um i think it's more important than your talent um your talent can only <clears throat> get you so far but um you know your reputation can get you into rooms that your talent wouldn't necessarily get you into and be like just off the strength of you being a good person being professional having your business in order, um, being a joy to work with, you'll get calls for stuff that sometimes more talented people would, wouldn't get the call for because of their other stuff, they haven't got that in order. So I think your character is very, very, very important. Um, and that's what will keep you working over the long term. Amazing. Um, Matty, um... Obviously, you've been playing in church. You still play in church. Uh, I'm sure everybody here does as well. Um, there's a lot going on with church musicians right now. There's a lot going on with church musicians in terms of how they're being paid, how they're being treated, how they're being spoken to. And we've already established in this conversation that starting in church is an amazing training ground as a musician, whether you're a bass player, drummer, keyboardist, whatever the case may be. How would you advise a, a, a young musician who's in church to go about being paid? Um, I guess to expand on that question. Why did I have to get this question? <laughs> look, 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 look how much trainers is behind him. He's getting paid the big bucks. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, um, but to expand on that question, how, how, okay, the first question would be, when, when, when should a musician stop doing free, um, free gigs? Should they even be doing free gigs? How should they go about money? Man, you know what? You know what? Look, there's, 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 actually, there's actually no... I, 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 I don't know. I, I always say that there's no rules in it. Like, everyone's path is a bit different. Personally, for me, I, I've never, I don't get paid in my church. You know? I don't want to... I tithe in my church. So I give 10% of however money I make a month to my church. I don't get nothing back. <laughs> like, I maybe get like, I think it's like £25 a week if I go. That's just for like expenses. So, and I'm cool with that, innit? I'm cool with that. I feel like that's why God has blessed me to have what I have. Um, and I feel like I, I, I never lacked. I've never lacked. Whether it's money or assets, etc. I've never lacked. And I feel like it's because of that. Um, but, if your vibe is to get paid in church, um, I guess go for it, man. Do you know what I mean? Or just like pray about it and see whatever your path is. I personally, pers my church is not a mega church. But like, see, like if I was to actually play at a mega church, yeah, they're definitely going to be paying me. Right. 100%. Because it's like they'd be flying preachers over, singers over. Uh, they'll be inviting preachers over, inviting singers over. So there's obviously a budget within the music and arts. So I believe that if you're contributing to that, then yeah, definitely you should be paid. And that's a, a correct amount. Do you know what I mean? Um, I feel like if I, if I played at my headquarters, um, which is like an 1800 CR, and it was like packed and filled every week, um, I would definitely want to be paid because I'm like, yo, there's this much people and you know, there's some money coming in, so there must be like a budget for the music and arts. But for a church like mine, it's a small church. I'm just kind of like serving, man. Um, but oh, each, to their, to each, to each to their own, literally each to their own. I don't want to come on here and tell anyone that like, there's a certain way that you must go about this. I feel like just pray and ask God however you feel you should do. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to. Okay, cool. Much. So would you, okay, so... From what I gathered, would you? So you're basically telling the musician first to actually study the church and see what they're actually dealing with first before coming up with this is how much I should get them, whatever, right? Uh, yeah, I feel like oh, 
it's so difficult, man. Anyone else can answer this question, by the way? Yeah, so it's, I, think so it, I think it kind of depends on um, how much time the, ch the, the church that you're playing at demands from you. If, right. uh, if it's if it's an understanding between you and the church that this is a, a job and you require this amount of time from me every week, then we can talk about, you know, compensation. But if it's just, okay, this is the church that I grew up in. I've been playing there every Sunday since I was five. Then that's a completely different thing. I know that's where, yeah, yeah, that's where yeah. Matty's coming from. Yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah. you know, you, like you said, you have to kind of weigh the, the circumstances and see, you know, okay, this... I'm in four rehearsals every week, plus Sunday. Okay, you're going to need to find my time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Which I mean, there's some churches that do that. Yeah, it's true, though. I, personally, I feel like church should actually give as much attention as, like, yeah, like a two, three rehearsals a week. Like, I would, I would love to be a part of a church like that, but just unfortunately, there's not much churches that do put that time and do put that money into their music and that. Um, unfortunately. Okay, cool. Can I, can I chime in on that one? Yeah, hundred percent. I got, I feel I got one take on this, yeah, and this is something I've had to learn over time. No one. One take, me. yeah. Studio no things as well. <laughs> if it is not my church, oh, uh, written member, it is yeah. a gig. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a gig. And I'll say this <laughs> especially for the African churches. They have a serious habit of, I will go play a Saturday event. Oh, where do you worship on Sundays? Like, brother, <laughs> what? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I think I, I wanted to... <laughs> These guys die because he knows it's true. It, ha it happens all the time, yeah? But I think what I want to touch on is... What I want to touch on is a point Matty made, yeah? And it's... I think don't be too quick, especially as an upcoming musician, don't be too quick to throw the pay me card. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I, I never, for example, my church, yeah, I tell my church, don't pay me. But my bishop is like, no, the boys have to get their money. And I, I, it's, not, it's not big money, is it? So I don't, I don't see it as, I'm talking about church, and look what's there in the background, you know. But I don't see my church as, I don't see it as a payment. You get what I'm saying? I don't see it as transactional. For me personally, I see it as a token of appreciation. You know what I'm saying? So if the minute I begin to treat it like a payment, it becomes conditional it's sorry so, sorry just to be clear is that are you talking about in terms of getting paid from your personal church or from yeah from my i'm, I'm speaking okay cool from my personal church okay. right now i will never walk in there and be like i need x amount of money else i'm right. not doing it because at the end of day one this is the church i've chosen to serve at do you know right. what i'm saying serving is not transactional serving is from your heart do you know right. what i'm saying so i'm offering that service to the church it's not for the church it's for god i'm offering that from my heart but try and know just try and know I'm not a member in your church. I'm not trying to hear no stories about the offering not matching up. I'm not trying to hear no stories about the trustees not in. The trustee hasn't matched <laughs> that proper not my business at all. That's on yeah. you and you alone. You called me here, even if it's fifty pound, pay the fifty pound and let's just go out. Different yeah, I, I think you would even be lucky to get fifty pound these days because I'm hearing churches, churches are paying musicians with um. You know what it is? And you, know what it is. Pie you, know my, you know what my problem is? Yeah? Do you know what my personal problem is with church? Yeah is that I am just a churchy guy. Like, bro, I just love church so much. Yeah. So, like, bro, you will catch me. Bro, I was at church this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, prayer and fasting, bro. It's me me and my grandma. I'm playing for my grandma. Like, humming, like, I, bro, I, I absolutely love it. Yeah? And I think, as Jim said, if you're about and you're around and you say you're not doing anything, run it. In it, like, yeah, if, like run it. Like, if, if if you can do it, then run it. But if you're not about, yo, I before um two weeks ago, I wasn't in church for six weeks straight. I was going crazy. I was like, yo, I can't. I literally got off the plane here yeah, and I went straight to church. And I got, I maybe got about forty five minutes to church. But the forty five minutes, bro, was it was sweet. Yeah. But like, there's no money that can pay. You. Matty, could you expand on that? Because I feel like people don't understand, um, from my perspective anyway, people don't understand the difference between playing for church and then playing for, like, rec free free too. Like, um, away right. from the music, is it how important would you say spirituality is? Oh, like, oh, it's, it's not honestly, because I really feel like, bro. I really feel like as musicians, we shy away from, from this conversation. So I really want us to... 
away from the likes, there's away from the spirituality part, yeah. It is so fun. Like I did convention yeah. the other day, yeah. With with I with Azar, Adrian, DJ, and Mayan. Bro, that was the livest gig I've done this year. Oh, I wouldn't say gig, but it was it was the funnest thing I've done this whole year. And it was just two days. Like it was so fun. Like I'm able to express myself. I'm able to worship. Yeah. I'm able to see my gift. Like I'm, I'm able to see the evidence of my gift, and that's the main mm, thing mm, mm, about mm. playing in church. Is like, the, is, is like seeing like the actual evidence. Like, Kabaya! 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 I've seen the evidence of your actual gift, and that may be like someone just smiling, maybe dancing. Like we done some song here called Strength for Eyes, and then like we just flipped it to like. Like a soaker van, and just like the way the whole place flips, it's just like money can't you can't pay me money for that. Yeah. And like there's a, there's like there's something. No one there, wants like, to give you a five. Huh? One auntie definitely gives you a five or after. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, yeah, it, but do you think it like if, like if you if I got no money for that, or if I got money for it, I would have still walked away blessed, and I'd have still walked away like amazed because I'm just like yo. It's, it's so, like, it's so vibey, man. Yeah. Like, every part of the service is just vibey. So, my thing is, I feel like that's my problem. And I only know a few people that have that problem. Like, I only know there's a handful of people that have that problem. Even, like, so from the church that I'm from, obviously, I'm from Church of God in Christ, Kojic, right? There's, like, there's a way us Caribbean plays certain music. Like, if you're not... Like Ginger will tell you, if you're not from our kind of church yeah, and you try and play in our church, it, yeah, it gets yeah. long. It gets long. It's, it's, it's not happening. There's only there's only like one person that I know that ain't from where we're from there. And that's maybe like <laughs> Tim. Love that's that. Tim, yeah. And he's the only guy I know that can hang. That's from what I know. Like we call it like Umchi Cha Cha, yeah. And that's from like Jesse and Jolly and Adrian and man. Then I'm gonna play like an old school revival thing. It's like Umchi Cha Cha, Umchi Cha Cha. Like before, yeah. like they'll play like reggae, but bro, when you start tracking that Umchi Cha Cha, bro, and you see the mothers and the bishops and they're running around, I don't want no money, man. But when I'm not about, I've got to go and work. Do you know what I mean? Unless they've made provision for me to stay home, and yeah. I don't think that they're able to at the scale that we all work at. Do you know what I mean? Um, you man don't laugh at the home cha cha if you don't. Yes, yeah, you can't. So you can't. I'll teach you. Ginger, uh, this question is for you. Well, yes, well, actually, it's, it's an open question. What UK musicians are catching everyone's eye right now? Like, what, who have you got locked in right now? That's more of a question for us. These guys. <laughs> but, um, this, guy, this guy's looking like a senior now. I'm a I'm an uncle now, so uh, the Pope. I, don't, I don't know what's what's hot. But um yeah, obviously these two these two are loads of guys. Do you know I shouted a few men out the other day? Yeah, like I would say a few them men out. I'd say um for me, I would say the power brothers. Obviously, South London. Obviously, uh, Daniel and Ramel, them guys as drummers. Ramel's doing Dave right Ramel's now. Ramel's doing Dave 19. at the moment. Bro. He's like, like. When you play drum guy, yeah, he's yeah. crazy. Oh, man. They're, they're from South. They're from South London, but they're from Church of God and Christ. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> 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 them Kojic boys. Them, them Kojic boys. I hear it. Stephen, who's yeah. got the eye right now, bro? Um, I. D- <laughs> There's so many, like, but it's weird. Like, I don't want to call them young because some of the people, my eyes are really on, they're not all young. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I have, and do you know what, yeah? My, my disbursement of, yeah, I rate you, is not always from your playing, but, yeah. like, if there's three guys here right now, I, I literally message them, like, every week. Tim, Smiley, and Jermaine White, Yeah. You see those three guys, you know I have to pick them up because like Jermaine is probably the same age as Ginger, roundabout, yeah. But yeah. in in a way, like Ginger's done Ginger Tones, Jamil, they've done the book. But Jermaine just was always on that, yeah, don't worry, my time will come, my time will come, I'll be diligent. And he's absolutely smashing it right now. Like he's never not here. 
the same goes for Smiley. Smiley. Let me just let me just stop you right there. Yeah. So uh-huh. you see, Jermaine, this is why I say everybody's journey is different. I'm, I am from the church where Jermaine served for like 15 years, bro. Like with my dad, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he done that diligently. He, diligently. I don't think I don't think he was on like mad wages. I don't even know what the what the business is. With yeah, they were at Ruwak. Yeah, yep. no, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to talk on that. I, don't, I actually yeah. don't know. But all I know is that he actually was there. Every, I was there. I saw him play every week. Mm-hmm. He's and there at the time. At the time. By, by these times, that red, bro, that red pole. Yeah, bro. Ginger, bro, 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 the red pole, bro. Man was on the, the, the natural finish, bro. The natural One, two, finish, three, bro. Brixton, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And these times, Ginger was doing M dubs. Uh, even before end of like P Andre. So what I'm trying to say is that other guys were doing other things, but he was just there serving. And this is yeah. why you must serve. Serving. Absolutely. This is why you must serve. And this house. links do back it. to what? And do it from. Do this it from. A, do it from a, yeah, do it from a good heart. Do you know what I mean? Because he yeah. served the house, and he and he the, the the house. All it does, man, is bless you. Do you know what I mean? It was under a great. It was under That's a great it. leader. Um, it was under a great leader, a great MD, great team. Stun it diligently, and then now nah, he's now nah, he's, he's flying. Jermaine's, in, Jermaine's right now. He's in America. He's in, no? like, America. He's in America. He's in America. Yeah, he's in so America this this, this weeks, goes so. back to the the first point that I was talking about, where don't be so quick to run out of church. Do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, sometimes, man. like, hey, man. see God. Yeah, God is a God of like private service, public blessing. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? You, you, you can't, time. you can't not see Jermaine right now. Big and time. It is evident, bro. I always say it's not every man that gets. Sorry, a sorry, pole sorry, deal. sorry. We got Michael Smith, Uncle Michael Smith. Yes, he was the yes, actual yes. main drummer at the time. Yeah, and yes. I just said, I, I'm listen, Uncle Michael. If he's one, of, he's my top five biggest influences ever. So, pick him up. Come he's on, the reason man. why man plays like brilliant symbols, bro. Man just had uh-huh. old school, <laughs> yeah. the brilliant symbols back in the day in church, like. Big up Uncle Michael. Sir, go and see, sir, go and see. But yeah, so that, that's a prime example. Smiley, the same. Like, me, let's say me and Matty, like, I think we've been some of the fortunate ones amongst our age group. Smiley's another one. He just held it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Tim. They, I, I've known Tim from school. Do you know what I'm saying? They've held it down, and now they're just unstoppable. Like, they're literally everywhere. I even told Smiley the other day. Smiley's doing Jesse J right now. And yeah. I saw... Um, I saw him play um, the song Nobody's Perfect, yeah? And he played one chop, and I was like, bro, it is so scary how you played that chop, just how Ginger would attack it. <laughs> but you sound like you. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah. that's so crazy. But, um, and then you got like the younger one, like E Man. E Man is. Bro, yeah, E Man. I say E Man is, is Matty's like. E Man's the new Matty. Yeah, 100%. Please. He's the new Matty. Please. He's the new Matty. Be careful. Be careful. He don't, he don't, he don't like that. He's his own man, you know. I see, yeah, nah, he's killing, I see man. um Victor, Victor on keys, like they're forming their whole little unit. Steve, yeah. Steve, one day Steve's on drums, Steve's on bass. Um, Jed, Jed's with Burner Boy, like, bro. This is and this is another Crazy. thing I want to say, yeah. Is this is this is something I'm very big on. Everybody wants to be the guy at the front. But yeah. let me tell you something. You see this game, I see it like this, innit? I'm here to do my job, have fun, get paid, go home. Yeah. Jed is there leading the pack of drummers. Do you get what I'm saying? Coming out, getting a cameo every His show. His time will come where he's where he's that way. His time is there, though. Bro. Because yeah. you need to understand where he sits right now. Everybody knows he's a drummer in the camp. So let's say E Man, main E Man, can't do a gig. Who's getting the phone call? That's just how it goes. Yeah, I'm from I'm I'm just prophesying. I'm saying that's nice right what you're now. doing now, bro. But don't worry. Your time will come. Bro, you know it's, it's, and then also shout out to you. But first of all, yeah, this <clears> guy <throat> is maybe one of the most professional drummers I've ever worked with, and I swear he's like 19, and that's Ebbs. Ebbs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my, how can I forget Ebbs? Ebbs. Yeah, Ebbs. 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 I swear yeah, he won, Ebbs. He Ebbs. won um, Young Drum of the Year, right? No, hold on, hold on. Ebbs is like. 10 seconds of silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. I called, him, I called him to do one of my artists the other day. And to be fair, like, the whole thing was a little bit last minute. So I was a bit, I was like, I don't know how he's going to handle it. Man came in, he, bro. Hey, I didn't say, I, could, I didn't, didn't need to say a word. I think, you know what I love about Ebbs, yeah? He's so, hey, and I see so, Jerry in there. Jerry, recent young drummer of the year, smashing it as well, putting in the work. Putting in the graph, 
But you see, Ebbs, Ebbs will come and... Hey, Brian Fraser Moore's in here. We have yes, to honor Brian Fraser Moore. My brother. Come big on. up, man. My oh, biggest bro. inspiration, Brian, man. I oh, saw a bro. picture of me and Brian Fraser from eight years ago. I had no beard, no nothing. You can see the, <laughs> you can see the excitement in my face. But um, Ebbs, Ebbs will come in the room, yeah? I remember Ebbs was playing for um, Shekinah for a bit. Ebbs walked into that rehearsal, didn't say a word. He's like, oh, hi, guys. And I was like, you learned the material, yeah? He's like, yeah, 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 I'm good, man. He's like, you sure? Like, I was like, yeah, cool, anything you need. Intro, two, three, go. I was like, oh. I was like, what? Yes. Yeah. That guy is... That's the dangerous. energy, man. Guys, I've got, a few, I've got a few more questions, yeah? Um, obviously, times are different right now. Um, you have just bare social media musicians. Okay, let me not put it like that. You have a lot of musicians that are using social Guys. media... Sorry, it's fun. It's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Not social media musicians. You have musicians that um, display their um, their gift online. How important is it right now to have social media presence as a musician? Is it important or is it more about who you know behind the scenes? Ginger? Um, I just, it depends on where you're trying. Sorry. Yeah, I guess it depends on where, which way you're trying to take your career because you can go the full way down the social media route and just you know be an influencer and do that thing um but there's a fine line and um i know there's a lot of people struggling with it because of the pandemic everyone was posting 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 and then um you know we're all going back to normal now and there's people are getting lost in that influencer market that's that want to work so i guess there's a fine line in just trying to find are you going to go full pelt down that route? Or, you know, are you still trying to, you know, play for artists and be a session musician? If you are, then, you know, you still got to know how to play with musicians. You still got to know how to play music. So um, I think you kind of got to, it's, it's, a, it's a sticky one because there's a lot of companies now that are looking at how many followers you have. Right. So... You know, it's a sticky one. You kind of got to weigh it up and, um, you know, play it, play it the best way. In fact, Brian Fraser Moore has a course on it. So, um, drummers, tap into that. The Bacante, um, you know. That's, that's back in the it's juice, it's juice. It's tropical juice. It's tropical juice. Okay, Stephen, Matty, do you guys have anything to add to that? Oh, yeah. Steve, let Stephen, Stephen's got that one, bro. I think, I think my yeah, biggest smash. thing is what Ginger said because I see, um, I'm not going to lie. I see guys that can play online, but when it comes to the real world, it's long. I can't lie. Me, me, listen, me, Matty, Matty, Matty is a Matty was Matty was venting to me the other day about a man he saw online, gave him a chance, gave him a chance, and it was long. <laughs> Get me out, man! Don't make me out. That's about private uh, story. <laughs> but I see a lot of that, so I think I think because I always say, yeah, you know, you know, the social media thing, yeah, it is controlled. Yeah. It is very controlled. Like, I can create whatever narrative I want. I can take the best part of my video and put it on there. I can quantize my chopper. So I can do anything and put it online. But, bro, there's some man, like, they'll come out. They can't, they, they can't even play for click properly. They, they yeah. can't even, like, gel with a band. Like, they don't learn music properly. So I think it's definitely what Ginger said. You've got to be able to do both. Like, definitely. Social media is currency. I'm not going to lie to you. It is yeah, currency. Absolutely. But have a grasp of the real world as well. Like, literally. Okay, cool. I said I'm going in today. <laughs> the next question I want to ask... Chest. Sorry. The next question I want to ask is about tour. A lot of musicians want to do this tour thing. They want to tour. They want to be on that bus. Like, what is that like? Because I spoke to Matty one time. I think it was, it was kind of a while back. And he was telling me how how challenging it can be one to your character one to your morals um and just just the whole lifestyle it's not as fancy as what people think it might be so what advice would you give to somebody how what do they need to consider before thinking about going on tour um and yeah what's the lifestyle like like if i wanted to go on tour what would you first say to me or what would you want me to think about before yourself i let ginger, I let ginger answer that one man you've been doing um, it longer yeah, I think um, in touring, I think for, I mean, me personally, like, I spent the majority of my adult life touring. So, you know, and it can give you a false sense of reality. 
Um, so you kind of have to you kind of have to learn how to unplug when you're not on tour. There's certain, there's certain people that are still on tour at home, <laughs> and um, you know truth, that you kind of have to unplug from that. You kind of have to learn to unplug from from that. Um, in terms of being like you're around people all the time, so it's it's tough mentally to always have to switch on your people in all the time. So you got to be ready for to be. You know, there's certain times where you just want to be alone, but there's people around, so you got to be conscious of that too. So, you know, um, mentally you have to be prepared to be around people all the time, be professional all the time, um, and certain things like that. Being away from family, that can get tough. It's, uh, it's There's a lot mentally that people don't talk about going into touring that I think um, a lot of musicians you know, we just kind of skate past it and then it catches up later on. So I think um, there's a certain mental side that young musicians and just anyone who wants to get into touring, I think, start to think about things like that as well. Um, and yeah, you know, all of us who are Christians, there's that side as well, maintaining the spiritual life on tour. I mean, I know that, you know, in the beginning of my 20s, Oh, that wasn't a priority for me, but that has become a priority for me now. So, you know, it's certain things like that that you just have to keep up and think about. It's not just going, getting on a plane, playing a gig and coming home. Right. Like, there's a lot of other stuff that goes into that. And um, there's a lot of stuff that we have to consider. But, you know, if that's something that you want to do, go into it and attack it and just Amazing. be the best you you can be. Could anyone touch on that question that um, Don's, Don's TM7 said? Can we give a perspective on touring while married or in a relationship? Like communication. That, I, I, I communication. Don't give it to the married one. The married communication. One communication is key. Communication is key. Ain't nobody that, Like, nobody even. That even. Communication. <laughs> <laughs> No, ain't um, no one in here married, but just, so we're just gonna answer a few questions um to end the live. <laughs> we're just gonna ask if, we're, gonna, we're gonna allow the um audience to ask a few questions. So another one of the questions is best places in London to go and play and get your face out there to network. Um, I don't know now because I'm not. Yeah, Matty, you know, that's you, man. Matty, that's you, man. So me, I don't know. I actually don't know. I honestly don't know. I want to say Troy Bar, but I think that's such an old school answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Same. Same. But I think yeah. I mean from what I see, you got Troy Bar, you got Ronnie's, um, yeah. Steam Down, um, Notting Hill Arts. Like those are like good places I see a lot of musicians go to. Yeah. But you have the internet now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the, the, it's not like before. Like the internet is <laughs> is your oyster. Let me let me clear that up because man's calling me sick, but yo. Yeah, no, I'm at you. I have, one, so. I have communication. I, I'm not saying that. What I'm basically saying is a man said married, and Ginger's the only one in here married. So I was like, you know what I mean? Yeah, guys. Mm, 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 mm. I'm, 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 yeah, man. Trust All me. All right, bro. guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My, um, this said Instagram. <laughs> We've got one more question, yeah? yeah. Um, well, not one more, but we've got another question. It says, how do you deal with any bad experiences that you might have with artists? If you, if any, any, any. Do you know what? Can I chime in? Because I saw the artist you mentioned. I'm not going to rename the artist, but it's from my world, isn't it? Now, mm. you see those people, they are very stubborn. Very, very stubborn people. Like, very, very... Hey, what, Nana, are you here? <laughs> Nana's right, are you here? But, um... They are very, 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 very stubborn people. Now, this, I think the biggest point here is what Ginger said about having your ducks in a row and having things in order. Now, I'm, I'm so, I, like, I say this all the time, I'm very privileged and very blessed to be a part of the unit that I'm a part of. And I say that to say because, you know, nothing's been handed to us. We have literally worked our asses off to get to where we are today and as a result of that there is a level of respect a lot of these artists do have for us and that's simply because of how we carried ourselves all these years you know being professional about what we do delivering the best in dude, listen big gig small gig we are putting in 110 percent every single time we get behind those instruments so as a result you get what you receive do you get what i'm saying so if you put that energy out there the people that are, you're going to be working with are going to be able to, you know, see like, nah, do you know what? I can't even mess with 
bro, like that. I can't even mess with Matty like that. I can't even do that. If it's down to stuff like money, listen, you can go to court for these things. Like, if they are genuinely taking the lick about paying you and stuff like that, threaten them. I'm going to go to court because it's facts. Invoicing has up to 28 days. If after 28 days you ain't got your bread, start filing that. And the second you do that, trust me, they will find the money. They will find the money. Or if they value, I always say as well, um, musicians, find the value you add to somebody's show. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, one person I always give credit to is Josh McNasty. You see the value he adds when he's behind the artist. Do you get what I'm saying? So, as a result, you want to kind of keep him on your good side. Do you know what I'm saying? So, if you now start saying, just a simple, bro, you don't pay me, I'm not blamed. Trust me, they're wiring that money today. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's just, you know, know yourself, respect yourself, and carry yourself properly wanna, and be about your business. I want to add to that, yeah. Um, and a big, a big, a big factor to this, especially uh, guys my age and younger or whatever, uh, always try and remain as humble as you can, man. Um, I, that's one of the reasons why I do go back to church every Sunday because... They're like, all of the mothers at church will be like, yeah, I mean, you see your pun BBC, or you see your pun da 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 But yeah, it's very good. But they're not like, oh, my days. I'm like, yeah, it's good, man. So it keeps you, like, yeah. Yeah. humble, man. Keeps you grounded. Like, you know, you already know your hat, but you don't have to let everybody know all the time. Like, sometimes kind of like just, you know, just be the guy in the back. And then eventually, if that if it's your vibe to you know, put bands together and the whatever it may be, you get your time. Like, oh, I don't scream it from the rooftop, but currently at the moment, well, current, I'm, I'm, I'm Storms is MD, innit? it? And I'll, I've been playing for Storms for about six, six years. You, say, bro. you see all them <laughs> trainers in the back? You don't understand? Whatever, man. But I've been playing for Storms maybe for about six, six, seven years. And it, it wasn't like my, like, goal to be MD for him. But I just kind of like did my thing at the back. If I was cool to play drums, if I was cool to, maybe like if the MD at the time asked me, oh, what do you think about this? Kind of chime in. And then eventually to the point where he's like, yeah, man, like, yeah. So now I'm, now I'm MDing it. But you kind of have to remain humble to get those calls or those situations or be in those scenarios. If you're just like loud all the time, if you're like, Making noise, just play your role, man. And just play Matty, your role. You sorry, man. I want to, I want to, I want to butt in because I want you, to, I want to direct, I want you to direct your answer somewhere else. In in the sense of, I want to ask you clearly because I, I feel like people don't understand what humility means. Humility doesn't mean downplaying who you are or your oh, skill man. or what you offer. So can you help them to be clear on humility? Because I'm tired of coming around people. I'm trying to be like you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that stuff <laughs> really creeps me. It, it really gets on my nerves. So, could you please explain to someone how to know their worth and stand with mm -hmm. that, but at the same time knowing knowing the definition of humility and how that looks practically? Well, firstly, get you a mentor, man. Thank you. Get you someone that kind of like keeps you grounded. Personally, my dad is someone that I look up to. Like, my dad is the most humble person ever. Like, he's just, he's just a nice guy, overall nice guy. I literally find out information about my dad online. Like, my dad's really produced, like, Earth, Wind and & Fire. Like, he's really done, like, he's really done that. He's really toured, he's done it. Like, I will, I will hands on the heart say, you know what, my dad is one of the most, if not most influential gospel producers slash musicians in this country, ever. <clears throat> he's been in this industry for over like 40 years, like over 40 years. And he never, I've never seen him make, make anyone feel like beneath him. He's always like, yo man, you're sick, bro. Like, you're, nah, bro, you're incredible. And that's just how he is. He actually genuinely feels that everyone's just incredible. Do you know what I mean? So seeing that from very close, as a very close um, example, I've kind of like kept that, because I'm like, and the same thing with my uncle. I've seen my uncle tour for four months, five months at a time. Sunday dinners, uncle's missing for like the whole year, bro. Man's just out. He's touring. Or I'll go see my godfather do an arena every month for two years straight. So seeing those guys do that kind of made me feel like what I'm doing 
not in a bad way, but I ain't really ain't that deep. Like, there's always someone that's done it before you and that's kind of done a little bit more. Like, bro, you, us, man, we've clapped Bear Live Landings, Bear BBCs, Jules Holland, but them guys will just be clapping down Wembley's and like Arena Tours, just how we were clapping down BBC. So it's like, not saying that there's a level down, but I've seen other guys do much more than I have personally. <coughs> So it's kind of kept me grounded. Um, so I've always, I've always tried to keep that uh, thing like number one. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like someone may annoy me and I might go at them, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not humble. Like I'm just human, isn't it? So, yeah. but yeah, man, just, just I, 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 I just tell everyone, try to remain humble, man. Um, Can I just add to that as well? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think another very important thing. I think everyone needs to remember, yeah. You cannot take your position for granted whatsoever. So God bless you in that position. Do not take it for granted because Absolutely. let me tell you something now. And this is something I said to someone the other day. I'm 25, yeah? But you got Ebbs, you got Eman, you got Steve. All these guys are 18, 19, 20, hungry. Do you get what I'm saying? Someone is waiting for your position at every moment. And then it then ties back to what we were saying. I was like, was saying... Your character is the biggest thing. Sometimes you get the call because of who you are as a person. Do you get what I'm saying? So I say that to say, I've seen a lot of guys, yeah, they'll get one nice festival season where they had their first break or they get that one tour. And all of a sudden, man's shoulders are like, here. Do you get what I'm saying? He's even saying, well, I'm going to be differently. Yes, bro, you're right, yeah? I'm just kind of like, whoa, like... (laughs) Well, one toy, yeah, all right, cool. All right. You know what I'm saying? It's cool, big shot. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, where I have to take my hat off to guys like Jerry Brown, Nicky Brown. Bro, they've been having careers before I was born. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, these guys, and they're still going. Like, those guys, don't get it twisted. Just because they're not on social media like us, don't think they're not out here in the field busy. Do you Absolutely. know what I'm saying? So, it's one of those things, like, like Matt, you say, that spirit always has to remain. Always, always, always has to. It's so key. Like, I, I've got time for everybody. Like, I, there's not a soul that I will meet, regardless Same, of whatever man. I've done. Same. I love everybody. If you think I don't love you, I love you. No, facts. facts, facts. <laughs> I love Even you. If, you don't, if you don't get a response from me on the gram, that's fine. But if you see me in person, yeah, man, I will stop it, and have bro. a chat. Bro, and yeah. then I always say this. And then they're just musicians. Like, yeah. we just play instruments. I'm not the artist getting 100k a show. I'm not, I'm not that yeah, person. Yeah. Quick, one I'm saying, Quick one and I'm done. Quick one and I'm done, yeah? Say it. Preach 2000 it. And, 2010, yeah? Ginge came to my church, my headquarters, yeah, with an artist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? I went up to Ginge and I was like, bro, are you mad? That is Jonathan Ginger Hamilton. Jonathan what? Ginger Hamilton. D- <laughs> what? d drop? What? Bro, yeah. I'm, asking him, I'm asking him for some sticks. And I was like, yo. I am Jerry's nephew. I'm, I was like, I'm Jerry's nephew. I'm Nikki's son, innit? Can I have some sticks, please? And he was like, Yeah. Absolutely, bruv. And he took his took some sticks out and I'll never forget it was two free A's, Vic first. And he gave me two fresh pairs, bro. There was even a second pair that he gave and it was a little bit chipped. And he said, No, 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 give me that back. Gave me a fresh one. Bro. Ginger and them three is, boy. Them that Aris yeah. Spears stick, boy. Yeah, <laughs> I could bro. never... This is before the Aris Spears one, bro. This is the three A's, Yeah, three A's. Like, yeah. I could never not be humble after so right. many guys have showed so much love and poured into me. And, and that's, I always that's what's kind of gotten us yeah. to where we Again, are. Yeah, yeah. It's all about paying it forward. It's like the same, yeah. same thing I did for Matty, just did for me. So yeah. it's like, you know, you got to pay it forward. You don't know... Like, you don't know when you're going to see these people again and you don't know what positions they're going to be in. Like, yeah. Matt, he's an MD now. He could call me for a gig. Come on. Like, yeah. let me get a gig. That's, that's how it is. Yeah, you, don't know what, you don't know what positions people are going to be in. And it's not just give just to get, but you're, you're paying it forward. You know, you remember when you was in that position and someone did it for you, so you have to pay it forward. And I know that's what these guys are doing. You know, uh, you know what I saw as well, yeah? I saw a sermon, and obviously he kind of said the same thing, but this is kind of like, yeah, he, he said the same thing, but you know in the Bible where it says like, like God will prepare a table, like, prepare, prepare for a table in front of your enemies, like, yeah. and you know what, a lot of people misread that scripture and think, ah, oh, like, I'm just going to eat, yeah. I'm going to like, I'm going to basically, like, do a madness in front of my enemies. I'm gonna show them like I'm the guy. Yeah. 
No, like God is a God of love. He 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 will bless you in front of your enemies for you to feed them as well. Come on, do you know what I mean? And they won't be your enemies, like do you know what I mean? And then you all work together. Take it. And if and my thing is, my thing is like I believe that if you cannot live within that, yeah, God will just bless someone else. Yeah, facts. Right. Because someone that lives within that, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not that. There's no competition. It's just, let's all do this thing. We all do the same thing. Yeah, it, it makes exactly. no sense. And what I always tell musicians as well, we're so stupid, yeah? I'm so sorry. We're so, so dumb. Yeah? Uh -oh. All these artists, they're all friends. And they make, we, we work for them. It's, we work it's for it. them. And they're making the, the one, the, bro, the 100K, the 250K a show. We're not even getting a percentage of that. Well, yeah. some of us are. Right at the bottom. Amen. Yeah, but still, yeah. And you're beefing. But the, exactly. the, the, the people that they are actually trying to ride with them, is, yo, they're collabing together. They're actually friends. Like, look at Dave and Stormzy. Bro, they're bred. They're, bro, they're bred. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're boys. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're Same boys. Same with Whiskey and Burner Boy. Like, Bro, like, they got two bedrooms, together. man. All of them are bedrooms. I'll tell you. Yeah, shit. crazy. So, I like, think... They're, they're, I think this ties back into what Ginger was saying I just um, to, in terms of character. Anyway. Yeah. Go on, go on. If you don't mind, yeah. I think something that Ingle said that's very important. Bro, honor musicians that have gone before you and love each yeah. other. Like, you don't understand how. Let me tell you something, yeah. That was a big thing to me, yeah. 2018. That's what we was doing a tour in America. This is when Ginger had just moved. Ginger came to the show. Ginger came to the show. And you know how, to me, that was like raw, like, bro, like, this is still one of my biggest inspirations coming. I don't even tell Matty this a lot of the time, yeah? His dad and Jerry Brown, yeah? The way they show man love. But I'm yeah. just like, raw, but it's like, when I see them, like, listen, I'll tell you straight, if I see Jerry Brown going to the gig, and they show it, they show it privately. If I see Jerry Brown going to the gig, I'm carrying his bag. I'm carrying his yes. bag. Because he's yeah. gone before me. He, he's, yeah. It's like, almost like seeing that senior pastor. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I see, I tell Matty all the time, yes, we're doing similar things, but bro, you inspire me, so I will never ever I, about what about. You do. I will yeah, always, my, always, my always give about. you that honor and respect. Do you know what I'm saying? Even the yeah. younger ones. I see, listen, I see some of the stuff the younger ones play, and I want to go to the studio and go and sit there and practice. So all of this, all, I'm going to say, I'm not going to dive into it, but all of this beefing, all of this undercutting of each other, all of this going behind each other's back to get gigs, lock it off. It don't take us nowhere. We all need to be like together in this team. Because sure, man, yeah. A man, like I'm saying, a man will call you just because, nah, bro's so cool. I want to give him that chance. He's going to get the call. Exactly. Even though this guy's yeah. better, he's getting the phone call. Mm -hmm. So that's my last. All right, cool. So um, thank you so much, guys. Honestly, yeah, I can't even lie. Even me, I'm learning a lot right now. It's crazy. Um, I want to finish this off by each of you individually giving free takeaways to any level of musician, whether that's a musician that's just starting, whether that's a musician that's been in the industry and coming up, or whether that's just somebody who's just looking for guidance and they're kind of stuck. What are three takeaways that you would like to give someone? I'll start from you, um, Ginger. Um, three takeaways for someone, um, for, for a musician of any, any level. Um, three takeaways is, firstly, um, always be yourself. Um, that's on and off your instrument. Um, you know, like Steven said earlier, um, if they want a person, they'll just call the person. So be you and be another person that they can call for a different sound or whatever you bring to the table. Um, number two is um, enjoy it, man. Sorry, sorry, Ginger. The, the, the first point you said, I need you to emphasize on that. You just said that they're calling the person and not necessarily the skill. The skill is still part of it, but the person... It's yeah, they're they're calling, calling. yeah, they're calling a the person, obviously, for what for what you bring um, in your personality and your character, but for what you can do skill-wise, hone into that, because there's something that you can do that nobody else can do as well. Um, and also, you know, enjoy this thing. As we've seen with the pandemic, like, it can be taken away for a many amount of reasons, so enjoy it. And play like it's your last, you know, like it's your last kick every time. And um, yeah, and just, just stay humble. And um, you know, if you haven't had the opportunity yet, stay diligent and work for it, and it will come. Thank you so much, Steven. 
Yes. Um, yeah, I think it sounds cliche answers, but remain humble. No, my first point, remember who gave you the gift? Definitely. Always honor that. Remain humble and just before anything, before anything, put your, your passion and your love for the craft at the forefront of everything. Because music is one of them things. I'll, I'll be honest, if you are to add the components of stuff that I've faced, things that I've been through in music, I should have quit. Like, on, and I can say all of us, like money issues and not working, we should have quit. But just the love of what we do has always gone before anything else. So, you know, when, you, when, when that leaves you, and the humility is there, and you just honor God and you give your gift to God, like, not to get all spiritual, but literally, seek you first the kingdom of God, and everything else will come. Everything else will come, literally. Pray with every show you do. Even if the whole band don't want to pray, that's fine. Go to the corner, do your own thing. Pray before you go out there. You know what I'm saying? So those would be my three things. Put God first, stay humble, and just love what you do. And someone said, yeah, I'm going to be in Ayanapa. Yes, I will be. <laughs> my bro um i feel like everything's kind of really said uh, but i kind of just want to make someone feel uh optimistic about about their future i just kind of want to let you know that every single one of us on this live have been in a position of like hunger and always wanted to get it um, so that would be to stay hungry, man. Literally, stay hungry, man. Because it's just a matter of time that it will happen. You know what I mean? It's a matter of time. And number two ready. would be uh, obviously I'm a Christian. If you don't know already, um, to the viewers, I would say definitely uh, fasting and prayer is key. Fasting and prayer is key. I always fast and pray at the beginning of the year. And I kind of just like align me. Um, and I kind of like just, you know, set, make sure that the vision is, 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 um, is like plain. Do you know what I mean? I can, I can really see the vision. Um, and that may be God just giving me inspiration. Um, that may be, I always ask God to, you know, like, let your will be done in it. Do you know what I mean? I may pray for something. Um, I always, again, I used to always see James do stuff. And I used to think, I want to do that specifically. But God didn't. What do I, God was like, nah, They're like, you don't need to do that. I got this for you. And my path being completely different, I wouldn't necessarily say it's better or worse, but I, I wouldn't want it any, I wouldn't want it any other way. You know what I mean? And um, the third thing would be to write down, write down your vision, man. Um, Write down what gigs you want to do. Write down how you want to sound. Yeah. Write down what gear you want to play. And yeah. then walk towards that. Um, it may be a mental note, but I think there's something about actually writing it down. Just typing it in your notes or writing it down. And then eventually you can, you're able to walk towards, you know, um, those goals. Um, and God will meet you. Do you know what I mean? Faith without works. It's dead. dead. Now, if you have the faith and you actually work, lethal, man. Lethal. Absolutely lethal. So, yeah, those are my three things. Uh, pray and fasting, uh, writing it down. And what was, the other, what was the other thing I said? Work. Um, yeah, man, work, man. Just work. Put the work in. Just work, yeah. work for it, man. Put the work in. Guys, yeah, man. thank you so much. Guys, it's been your boy, yeah, you. Ginger. It's been your boy Stephen Asamoah Dua. It's been your boy Matthew. Come on, yeah. honestly, guys, thank you so much. It's been amazing. Um, it's been a pleasure, there's man. so many people that look up to you guys. Um, so thank you for giving your time. I know Stephen's about to start playing right now. Matty, I know you're in the studio. Um, so yeah, thank you for giving your time. I know Stephen's about to start playing right now. Matty, I know you're in the studio. <laughs> I'm in my room, bro. Um, guys, honestly, yeah, thank you. It's been a blessing. A <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been lit. This video yes, is going to be uploaded on YouTube, so you guys will be able to watch this back. Um, oh, nice, nice, nice. But yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been great, guys, man. So I'm going to end this now. Love, 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 love. 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 Come on, man.